Hello everyone. Who should have control over a child's gender identity? An update on a bill making its way through the Senate. ARPA Canada's legal team appeared in court today and ARPA is now offering financial advice. It's Wednesday, June 21st, and this is Quick Updates. Hey everyone, so you might have heard about a big dispute in New Brunswick over the last couple of weeks where the Premier is being accused of homophobia simply because he's changing some rules around the Education Act in that province. Uh, in fact, that's not, not at all the case. What the Premier has done is simply made a small amendment to their Education Act to allow for or require uh, schools and teachers to make sure that parents are informed about their own children while they're at school as it relates to things like gender identity, gender expression, that sort of thing. In fact. Uh, my colleague John Sikama and I wrote an article for Troy Media that was published last week arguing that the Premier actually doesn't even go far enough. So I encourage you to give a, uh, that article a read if you want to check it out, uh, share it on your social media platforms if you agree, and start this conversation or continue this conversation uh, in that way. Thanks so much for your support. In June 2022, Senator Stan Kutcher introduced Bill S-251, seeking to ban all physical discipline of children in Canada. Since it was first attempted a few decades ago, the idea of banning corporal discipline has become increasingly popular in Canada. 65 countries have already done so, and Canada might be next. Last week, the Senate passed Bill S-251 at second reading, and it will now be studied at committee. ARPA Canada also plans to submit recommendations to the committee over the upcoming weeks. In particular, our recommendations will focus on parents' discretion to discipline their children as they see fit within the existing law. This summer, ARPA Canada will also be releasing our newly updated policy report on corporal discipline, along with an easy mail for you to also get engaged on this issue as well. Stay tuned for further information. Hi everyone, we're here at the Ontario Court of Appeal in Toronto for the King versus Whatcott appeal hearing. Uh, Mr. Whatcott was criminally charged with hate speech for distributing a flyer at the Pride Parade here in Toronto a few years ago, a flyer that included some pretty disturbing content, um, but one of the issues that we're concerned about is the government arguing that his teaching or his position that homosexual relationships are immoral uh, amounts to hate speech. So we're here to argue that the law distinguishes between criticizing conduct and promoting hatred against a group for whom that conduct is important. Um, also to tell the court that the law is really concerned with the effects of, of speech. Is speech used in a way, again, that's going to really promote and cause other people to, to hate and maybe attack a group versus the ideas. The law is not supposed to censor certain ideas or beliefs themselves. And finally, while it might not be appropriate for the government to tell people to change their, their beliefs and, and maybe certain kinds of personal conduct, it's certainly generally uh, people have the freedom to encourage other people to change core beliefs and, and conduct. So that's what we're here today to, to argue. Um, look for further updates in the near future. Thanks. Hey everyone. Last week here in British Columbia, we gave the government a little bit of financial advice. So every year, the BC government solicits submissions and suggestions from regular citizens about how they should craft their next provincial government. And so we gave the government three recommendations. First, to balance the budget. BC is in a deficit this year, and we need to start first and foremost by balancing the budget. Second, to simplify the tax code. Instead of having all sorts of different taxes and exemptions and making this all complicated, we need a simple tax system. And then thirdly, we urge them to not to fund medically uh, or controversial procedures, things like abortion or euthanasia, sex change surgeries, and the like. Even if those procedures are going to be legal, we believe that the government should not be using the funds that from taxpayers to fund these objectionable procedures. So we hope the provincial government will take these to account. And we ask that you continue to pray for our provincial governments as they plan how to craft their upcoming budgets this year or the next year, that they may use the money entrusted to them wisely. As you may have heard, Bill C-311, the Violence Against Pregnant Women Act, was voted down in Parliament last week. But we want you to know that we don't see this as a loss. Private members' bills, that is, bills that are not introduced by the government, rarely pass. But they are a great way to keep the conversation going and to bring national and government attention to various issues. And we did see progress. A few years ago, a similar bill got only 76 votes in favour. 
This bill last week saw 113 MPs vote in favor. There is growing awareness that when a pregnant woman is murdered, then her child is also a victim and should be recognized. And you can keep this awareness growing. If you have any flyers or postcards that you ordered through our There Were Two campaign, please continue to use them. Those materials do not have the bill number on them and they are timeless as long as there is no law. So we hope that you'll continue to raise awareness for pre-born victims of crime and we'll continue doing the same. Thank you. That's it for quick updates this week. Thanks to you for watching. Please do like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you again next week.